Welcome to the SELA episode of the Christian Men at Work podcast. We're in between my interviews with Christian men. I talk about five things. S is something on my heart. E is an example of faith at work. L is logos, or a passage from scripture related to work. A is an announcement. And H is a handy tip to help you be more effective at your work. Men at Work, welcome to episode 210 and SELA episode 106. Today I'm going to start a four-part series on father filtering. And in this episode, I'm going to give you an overview of what I mean by father filtering. And then we're going to talk about the first of the four topics. The term father filter is something I heard recently from one of my mentors, Uh, Dr. Joe Martin. Uh, The way I think about this issue, it kind of goes beyond the idea of what would Jesus do and trying to be like him, but rather about literally partnering with our Father in our walk here in the flesh as justified but ongoing sanctified children of, of our Father. Joshua 1 verse 9 says, Do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. As believers in Yeshua, we all recognize that God exists and that he's always with us. But since most of us are not hearing an audible voice from him, we may wonder sometimes what his constant presence in our lives means and looks like. One way I've begun to understand his presence in my life is through this concept of father filtering. It recognizes God's presence while also recognizing our free will and the role that we play in how God is part of our daily journey. God is the perfect filter. He is holy. He is perfect. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. What I'm going to be talking about with father filtering is not a passive activity. We have to recognize God's presence in our lives and intentionally seek his will, or you could say his filter, for every part of our lives. What we consider the big stuff and and the little stuff. It's interesting when I did a search to look up this chapter and verse for this quote, since I remembered the verse but not the exact location, A second verse also showed up in the search, and it came from Ecclesiastes 2, verse 3, which says, I searched in my heart how to gratify my flesh with wine while guiding my heart with wisdom and how to lay hold on folly. What an interesting contrast between how Solomon searched in his own heart how to gratify his flesh versus what we're going to be talking about, which is seeking our Father's heart instead of our own. Jeremiah 17.9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? We cannot trust our heart. We can completely trust the heart of our Father. And that goes against um, oftentimes what we hear when we hear we should follow our heart. It's not a good idea. So that leads me to the first of four applications to this Father filtering that I'm going to talk about today, which is sight. Um, In reading a book recently by Joshua Harris called Not Even a Hint, which is based on Ephesians 5, verse 3, but among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed because these are improper for God's holy people. Joshua defines lust as craving sexually what God has forbidden or to want what you don't have and weren't meant to have. God's standard with regard to lust is spelled out clearly in Ephesians 5, verse 3. He desires that we not lust at all, whatsoever, not even a hint. And though lust is a heart issue, our eyes or our sight, particularly particularly with men, are often a part of it. As Joshua Harris says in his book, lust tells you lies, the truth sets you free. I thought about a song by Leland that says, What are you doing when nobody's watching? 
with father filter with father filtering it's more than just knowing our father sees all that we do and look at with our eyes as a father who's outside of us which he is but rather recognizing his holy spirit is inside of us as well and in, and inviting him to filter what we see this can lead us to make different choices like like not looking with lust at women it can also help us see others with more compassion, empathy, and kindness, to see others in circumstances with his eyes. So here's my application or my challenge for you at work this week. Are there women at work that you're tempted to look at with lust? Are there co-workers that you tend to look down upon or with judgment, seeing their flaws and not their pain? Each day this week, think about how you can father filter what you see at your job and see how it changes your heart. And that will do it for this week. Next week, we will talk about the second application of father filtering, which is our speech. Have a great week. Love you guys. God bless.